just don't take yourself too seriously ever learn as much as you can about about you know everything that's out there but just never take yourself too seriously a clinical feature if i can use that expression of uh man of personality is that they lack a sense of humor yes they, they lack a, a sense of complete openness about themselves they're not interested in helping people personally they're interested in them that's that that's the thing that, that they lead with so no sense of humor being interested in themselves and also having a drive to want to be one you don't become or you know someone would not become a man of personality by accident that they mm. have to work hard to achieve that because it's mm. a competitive environment out there if, if, if you want to be one of these people, you have to compete to do it. Therefore, you must want to do it. Therefore, there's some kind of instinct which is driving you to do it. And it'll be to do with dominance. It's pretty primitive. You know, it's Adlerian yes. at a psychological level. Uh, but at the level of pure instinct, it'll be to do with dominance and dominance hierarchies, that kind of thing. If you don't want that, you won't seek it out. If it's not important to you, you won't seek it out. But with mm. respect to people trying to make you one, well, that resides in them. Uh, and uh, that really might have to do with an internal psychodynamic trying to work itself through in a way that the person who projects or transfers can then be given an opportunity to understand what they are doing when they transfer. You see, what you will get is a substitution of the object whilst people move, move the projection around trying to find a place where it will settle and live outside of them. That's all a reason, not really a reason as in logic, but it's a, a functional reason uh, to do nothing about being conscious about what you're projecting. You're just finding another hook to, to, to drape it over. Mm. But if you uh, catch yourself doing it, or if you're aware that you've ever done it, then the, the solution will be to just stop, pause, and internalize that process. Ask yourself, what is it that I need that I am projecting onto this person or group or ideology, whatever it is, that suggests that I have some kind of need that I'm not actualizing within myself and I want a proxy personality to do it for me. Uh, and if you work back on that, you will uncover, I'm sorry to say it, I'm repeating myself, instincts again. <clears throat> uh, and that instinct will be the instinct to become yourself, but the need to have a role model and to, to be part of a dominance hierarchy to have a rank yourself to say, I follow that person or that person. You know, I support that football team instead of that one. I belong in that nation state and not that one, that religion, that ethnicity and so on. It's, it's all about forming hierarchies and getting a place. You then get referent power. So if you can make someone important enough, you know, you don't take the flack, they do, but you then take a little bit of the light that bounces off them. This is how it works. This is, this is how you get followers of these manner personality type leaders. If, however, you're as absolutely open as possible that you can be, uh, show your humanity. Don't get attached to other people's outcomes beyond perhaps wanting to help them. Uh, don't take yourself seriously. Accept that people will transfer onto you anyway because it happens in daily life. Uh, and just go and do other things with your life other mm. than just this, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, have have a, a, a other aspects that, that that's yes. a lived life isn't it is that's, it, that's, that's yeah that's is, sorry stick on is the adaptation uh to um, social life yeah and uh talking with people who don't know you do this and have no interest even if you did it wouldn't matter to them you know so don't start around being being too important you know have other ways of expressing and actualizing yourself don't make this too important if this becomes too important it means you're not living Mm. It just becomes a, a big abstraction. And then all these internet personalities are reifications that you project onto. You don't know them personally. You read their books. And they may be deceased people who died hundreds of years ago, but it's like you know them. You don't know them. It means you're not living. By all means, go and study them and internalize that work, but do so in a critical and reflexive way. Uh, check yourself while you're doing it. And then go do, do something menial or humble. Young did, or he tried to. He had a very, very privileged life. And he had to uh, compensate for that by, by struggling really hard to live a simple life. And he said himself how difficult it is to be simple. Mm -hmm. Well, that was, if you like, the compensation for the complexity of his life and also the luxury of it. He never wanted for money. 
He never went through the two world wars that raged all around him. Uh, he had a legion of adoring women all around him, and he indulged in that uh, adorning from the from these women quite famously with a number of them. Uh, he lived a privileged life. He gave a lot back, yes, but he's human, so there was a cost to that. Uh, you can avoid all of that if you, you live a genuinely authentic, simple life and perhaps have two or three other areas of your life that at least on the surface have nothing to do with this uh, and that you can interface with people who don't know that you do it, uh, would have no interest in it, treat you like an ordinary person, you are an ordinary person, everything's fine. But yeah, if, mm. if you become a man of personality, it's because you've wanted to. Mm. You can see the power drive. You just watch them. And look at their biography, their living biography. Not one they might write 20 years' time, but what they've done in the past 20 months. Look at that, and you'll see the trajectory. I want to comment on Carl Jung as well, because this is, I've talked about this on our Discord server the other day. It's the ultimate test to see how much you've projected onto Carl Jung. So if people who've watched the Ion series, this, this one's for you, I guess. Uh, Edin just said in the his Ion lectures, right at the very, very end, he was talking about the coming of the new Aeon of Aquarius. And Edinger believed this, by the way. He was out and out saying that he actually believed this. Um, that Jung himself was the harbinger of the new age, the Aeon of Aquarius. And he based this on a dream where he was the Mithraic god Aeon. In other words, he was there and there was a snake that was wrapped around him and there was like a lion that was coming towards him or something because he got like a, li a lion's head. So Jung believed himself, at least implicitly, that's what you can see in the writings, and Edinger also believed that Jung was basically Christ. Equivalently, for the new Aeon of Aquarius. So it's like that then puts the entire Ion and the Ion series, everything else into perspective. And it's like, do you believe that? And if, if the answer to that is yes, then there is, you know, maybe you can question the kind of projections that you've had onto Carl Jung the man. Because eventually when you disentangle those, the way you see him basically is like visionary genius who, who produced a lot of great information. That's it. Mm. Like yeah. in, in terms of us as normal people living normal lives, that's basically it. And it's, it's no different to anybody else in terms of respect or status. It's probably the right relationship to have to him, actually, James. It's the safest relationship to have to him. I, I used to, you know, I used to consider elevate him way higher. Mm. Um, it was, when I was looking at great men, it was you know Jung and Nietzsche, and then even like Alfred the Great, and it was like, yes. these great men above me. And it's like when when you really think about it, it's like no, mm. they're not really. It's the yeah. same thing with with social media. If you just remove the follower account, yes. you stop following. Yeah. It's, it's even the word follower is quite sinister on social mm. media. It's like, just remove that. Just normal people who've been elevated based on social capital. So, well, you, okay. with, a, with a lot of celebrities, for example, you, you find that they, they kind of crash under the, you know, the weight of the projections onto them. And they nearly always end up in rehab, don't they? Or yeah, they some such thing, because they, they just can't carry it, the adoration. So um, my view would be that it's not, it's not a desirable thing anyway. Why would why would you want why would you want to to have to sort of carry those kinds of pressures? Geniuses tend to suffer as a victim to their own genius and to their own visions, and the more you push that, and the more you, you know, somebody gets their own way with respect to their environment, and he did have complete control mm. over his environment massively. You know, um, the more likely you are to have a very loose boundary. Uh, and he, he was uh, articulating big ideas, bigger than any normal person's identity can cope with without some modicum of inflation. Um, he, he, he was very light on his feet. He was very capable of displacing and distracting and shoving that all around into different things and different places, uh, partially probably to protect himself uh, and partially also to sustain it, because that's the trap that people get in when they get like that. Um, there's no doubt that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that, yeah, he, he was a genius in the sense that Socrates was, that, that both had a creative day on, uh, and they both followed it. Um, to get into Jung's personal myth is not easy if you're distracted by the contents of that myth, because they resonate with some belief that you're coming into uh, encountering his work with already in place, because that becomes another filter. Uh, and you get a confirmation bias too. So people tend to find in his work what they want to find in it, rather than perhaps what is there. Uh, and another problem is there's a lot of things in there. So lots of people can find confirmation bias, but then there's contradictions as well. Uh, and that then gets problematic. 
so it, it is difficult one way to get a rain check on it if you like or, or a weather check on it is to what do other people think of Carl Jung who don't follow him what do other psychologists psychotherapists psychiatrists think of Carl Jung's work well you'll get an answer for sure uh, what do other religious people think of him because he was religious without a doubt uh, and there's plenty of examples of religious people who supported him and there's plenty of those who didn't so that's that's all normal enough people agree and disagree and so forth but, but if you, you your your intention is to discover <clears throat> what added up to being him then you do have to follow his biography you have to start with when he started and you have to follow, start follow on from that with the family dynamics and relationships that were there and his influences and then follow him through his career and it all starts to become very, very clear. If you can do that and come out the other end and still have some respect for him, mm. that's quite different mm. from just, just taking it on board because you've actually got a bicycle pump up your arse yes. and you're also inflating, mm. which happens with a lot of these people you know, who identify with him and try and follow him. You know, they're not living the life that he would say to live for, for a start. Mm. So pull a, pull a pump out of your bum and go out and get a real life. <laughs> And, you know, that, that's the best way uh, yes. to do it. And switch off from it. Switch off from it. I mean, we, well. we sometimes have people saying to us, you know, oh, you, you must be analysing me now. And we say, it couldn't be bothered. Can't be bothered. Can't be honest. I've got to think about, you know, what to make for tea or, yeah. those, or something else is, is pressuring you. Yeah. Um, and, and, and those things are entirely normal and should be embraced and should act as a counterpoint yeah. to anything yeah. else that you're doing. Yeah. That way you keep your feet on the ground. Yeah, Edinger speaks for himself enough said yeah he's copious and productive is he original no well, is, the ca is the categorical answer to that and i've read a lot of his books actually i'm reading them and i'm like why 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 it's like the, the x lectures the x lectures the x lectures are all over the place it's like dude write your own stuff Yes. It's, and, it's, and it's all specifically and, and even then that's maybe that's an, uh, an easier one to see in terms of the personal myth of course we're making videos on this in the future you've got Jung's personal myth as you say it's quite fairly in, impenetrable it's more uh, hypnotic but Energy's personal myth it's like he wanted to be Carl Jung basically it's like if, if, you're in, if your entire life's work is based specifically on explicating one man not, not his ideas because you know you've got followers of Darwin that worked on Darwin's ideas but Carl Jung the man and his profound wisdom that he discovered well, in his own well, this, this is one of the, the the therapeutic values of asking someone about their personal myth if someone comes in and i don't mean that in general I'm, I'm speaking clinically if somebody comes in and they've acquired an awful lot of other people's opinions and beliefs including negative ones about themselves then if you simply say well where amongst all of that are you sometimes people will just jaw will drop because they've never asked that question of themselves and one of the, um, the things that Pauline used to use very effectively clinically in the NHS was a very simple diagram, a self-concept diagram. Oh, yeah. Where the, you know, <clears throat> there would be a series of circles and a central circle, which is the person's self-concept. Yes. And then under different people's headings over the other circles, to mm. fill in that circle with the influences mm. that have added up to that. And then say, okay, well, how much of all of that is really you and how much is them determining you? Yes. Now, and uh, when did you when did you stop being you? Never mind when you started. At what point did you stop? When did you get off the bus? Mm. When did you turn off the road <clears throat> in terms of your own development and allowed other people to steer you towards them? So you become a, a convenience for them rather than, than to become who you should be. And again, this is another angle that if you really work on the personal myth with, you will uncover. It's not easy. Because the personal myth isn't a, a get off on some fantasy you've been leading all of your life. It's also uncovering all of your neuroses and maladaptations. It's uncomfortable. But you, you'll get a lot out of it. So, you know, about Edinger, I, I, I asked, you know, in a, in a prompt sort of way uh, of yourself, you know, well, who is he? What is he? That, that's what I meant. You know, is, is he distinguishable from that background? I don't know enough about him to answer that objectively at all. But um, was he original? If he wasn't original insofar as he originated himself in his own journey, then he, he did individuate as far as he, it was possible to go. To be quite honest, I've got lots of his stuff on the shelf. I've, I've read them. I don't ever want to look at them again. I'm not getting anything out of them. It's not doing anything for me. I wouldn't recommend any of his reading. Um, when I've seen him interviewed, the guy's boring. 
you know, uh, and if he came across like that clinically, there's a great danger of him being depressogenic, mm -hmm. which is inducing depression and withdrawal and it's an energy of, thing, an energy it? thing, a, a sense of being somber. And it might well be mm -hmm. that when he was working with people, he was not like that, and this is just the way he is when he's doing other things. And if so, that's absolutely fine. But I don't know the man personally. I never met him. All I have to, to go on is what he's written and how he comes across uh, in uh, video interviews. And none of it appeals to me at all. There's nothing in there that I can't get somewhere else and have got somewhere else better. So he's of no interest to me. And I would put other people in that bracket as well. You know? But this is a process we all have to go through. We have, we have to decide, we have to take responsibility for who we allow to influence us, you know, who, who we allow to interject, and then try and work out just how much of this is bullcrap and fantasy on our part, and how much of it is a reality orientation. It's like Adolf Guggenbull Craig, mm. who wrote the book Power in the Helping Professions. Mm. Young young analyst, he didn't like Young at all, personally. He found a lot of things about his character objectionable, and he says so, but it does not detract from the fact that he learned a great deal from him. Mm. Now, we need people like that. We need people who are honest enough to say there are things here that uh, I'm very, very uncomfortable with. And that personally, when I met him, which is what Guggenbald Krug said, uh, Krug said uh, I didn't like him at all. And you might say, there's something wrong with him. Well, maybe there was. But this is somebody being honest enough to say that despite that, I'm not carrying over an ad hominem argument against his ideas and then the translation of those ideas into therapy in the real world. Mm. That's a much more balanced position to take mm. than assuming he's some kind of new, new age guru or messiah. I mean, he opens, um, I think it's Memory Dreams Reflections by saying, if people say that I am uh, wise or a sage, I must disagree. Now, that's either genuine on Jung's part because he's distancing himself or it's not genuine and he's inviting people to do it anyway. We can't know for sure. You have to work that out for yourself, and you can only work it out for yourself if you internalize it properly as an object, not as a thing to identify with, and this objective thing that you take inside, you bash yourself against, and you bash your everyday experience against. I've, I've been through the whole thing with, with, with Carl Jung. When I, I first encountered his work, it was a man who could explain me to me. That's, that was what I felt. Uh, when no one else before up to that time could have done. And it, he gave me the tools, I felt, to understand everything I was going through. He, uh, he gave me the courage, I believe, or his, not he didn't, but his writings did, and I'll be clear about that, um, to pressure test myself in the police. Not physically, because you can't do that. You do that in your own physical body, in your own action. But morally, to test my character, to see if I could stand up to my impression of who I was and then find a way of understanding myself if I fell below those standards. And no one else around at that time that I had access to could give me that kind of perspective on myself. And then I followed it through with, with all, all of my clinical work, my self-development and everything. Uh, and my view on them has changed. It's bound to, because as you get more experience, it should. Otherwise, I'd still be 16 instead of 63. What the hell have I done in the 47 years since? I've adapted myself to real world experience. It doesn't take away from the value of, of his clinical work at all, or of most of his techniques and a great deal of his ideas to be able to say in some things he was demonstrably wrong. And not just in his personal life, his own family have criticized him about that, for example. Um, but in terms of his actual ideas, don't stand up to proper scrutiny at all. And then if you look at the background of it, and the collective works on the shelf here, all of them, and I've had them since the 1970s. I've read them many, many times, cover to cover, and I've internalized them properly and I've pressure tested them. So I'm absolutely sure that within my limitations, and I do have them, that, I, that I've pressure tested those ideas to breaking point. And out of that, I've distilled my own experience in a way that I can live with and that, that I can use. All I would ever ask personally of someone else is that they do the same. Otherwise, you're not being authentic. And, it, you know, it may take a long time. It's not a click of a mouse. 
where, where some, some of our viewers are now, they won't be in 10, 20 or 30 years in terms of their ideas and of their life experience. If they don't expect to develop, they probably won't. And they'll stay as they are now. So please, you know, engage with the process in a living and dynamic way, I would say.